There are many regional variations, but the general concept of the kebab is shared by Indian and Turkish cuisine. This inspired Yurika to experiment with other recipes from the land that for centuries has been a bridge between East and West. And she's sharing some of them with us today. I've ventured down to Forsberg and I'm at my favourite kebab house and butchery. The Turkish brothers that own this store are really friendly and helpful and I'm hoping today they're going to share some secret recipes with me. And now let's watch how we marinate some lamb chops. Right, so what do we have here, Harun? You've got some salt, oregano and... Is that paprika? paprika? Yes, right, paprika okay. and... Uh, and homemade this? natural yogurt. Uh huh. So it's a homemade and yogurt. Homemade. We we make it our own. Some organo. Mm -hmm. Nice smell. And that and salt? Test. Yes. Salt. Some paprika. And some uh, oil. sunflower oil. And you've tenderized these lamb chops this today. We've tenderized it mm -hmm. already. I'm looking forward to trying this. Okay. It's really hot behind the grill, but this is one of the perks of doing my job is I get to try all these delicious treats. And I can't wait, this lamb is going to be amazing. Wow, this is really tender. Mm. In a world that keeps changing, it's amazing to stumble across a place like this where time and tradition stand still. I'm feeling quite inspired. I've got some pomegranate molasses and next ingredient, chili flakes. These are proper Turkish chili flakes, which are gonna work really well in the marinade. Harun, thank you so much for sharing that Turkish marinade with me. And I hope to see you soon. Okay, bye. We're gonna head back to the kitchen, dust off these aromas and get ready to cook. I'm feeling inspired with my Turkish menu today. I'm making a Turkish roast leg of lamb to go with that brinjal and chickpea pilaf. And then for dessert, my very own creation, a baklava cake. I'm starting out with the lamb first. It takes quite a while to cook. And for that, some salt going into a roasting pan. The lamb goes on top. Got a leg of lamb here. You can also use a shoulder of lamb for this recipe. More salt going on top. And now, chili flakes or pepper flakes. Need about three tablespoons. To that, some garlic. And next sumac, about two teaspoons. This is a light lemony berry. It's used in Turkish and Arabic cooking as well. Mix those ingredients together. Cumin and coriander going in. Two teaspoons of each. Cumin and coriander is used in Turkish food, Indian food, Arabic food as well, even Moroccan food. Next, olive oil, about 100 to 125 mils. Mix the spices together with the oil. Next, some lemon juice. This is quite a juicy lemon, so I'd say half would do nicely. Spoon the paste over the lamb. Use your fingertips and smear the paste over the lamb making sure you coat the underside as well. Got some fresh thyme here. Pop this under the lamb. This prevents it from burning. Next ingredient, pomegranate molasses. It gives a lovely caramel flavor, some color. You'd need about four tablespoons of pomegranate molasses. Now cover this with foil. Shiny side in, seal this quite tightly. Now you can leave this to marinate overnight or you can roast it off straight off. I'm popping it into a preheated oven, 120 degrees Celsius for about three and a half hours. I sometimes serve the lamb with pita bread or even naan bread, but today I'm making a chickpea and brinjal pilaf. For that, I've preheated a pan. In goes some sunflower oil, spices, bay leaf, cinnamon stick, and some cumin seeds. Sliced onion going in. Teaspoon of salt. In Turkey, it's called a pilaf, but Indians call it a pilau. While I'm waiting for the onions, I'll start with the brinjal. Use a serrated knife and slice the brinjal into rounds. Some people call it eggplant, it's also called aubergine. For me, it's just brinjals. 
Pop the brinjal into a sieve or a colander as well. Sweat the brinjals with some fine salt. It absorbs less oil when they're fried. Leave that aside for about 10 to 15 minutes. I've used a sieve, the bitter juices will drain off from the eggplant and I've put a bowl under to catch those drippings. The onions are pale golden and fragrant. Next, some basmati rice. Gently coat the rice and the oil with the onions. You don't want to break up the rice grains because it will turn your pilaf into a mush. Now saffron. I've roasted some strands of saffron here and I've got boiled water. Crumble the saffron into the boiled water. You can see that colour coming through already. Pour that into the rice. Reduce the heat and gently stir. Add butter. You don't have to stir the butter in. In fact, just leave it to melt on its own. Now chickpeas, just spread them around evenly. I cover the pot with a tight-fitting lid and let the steam on the lowest setting for about 15 minutes. Making baklava is an absolute art and I've devised a cake which is quite easy and has some of my favorite ingredients, semolina being one of them. Semolina going into a bowl, 350 grams. Desiccated coconut. Sugar, a teaspoon of bicarb, use a whisk just to work those ingredients together, milk, some yogurt, about two tablespoons of double thick yogurt and now melted butter. Work those ingredients together, scrape the bottom of the bowl and make sure the ingredients are well combined and free from lumps. This goes into a grease pie dish with a loose bottom. Smooth that down, tap the tin lightly and bake this off in a preheated oven 170 degrees Celsius for about 30 minutes. For the baklava part of the cake, what would it be without a layer of phyllo pastry? And I need about four to five sheets. You have to be quite gentle when you work with phyllo pastry. And I'm using a pair of scissors. Got some melted butter here. Brush that over a little more around the edges. And the next layer. And then more butter. Make sure you brush lightly. The remaining butter going on the top layer. This is an incredible topping. You can use it on any cake. I've even done a birthday cake using it. Roll this up tightly, just like a Swiss roll. And once it's done, slice into pieces. They look almost like pasta squiggles, as you can see. Pop them onto a baking tray. Now open these up slightly. These go into a preheated oven, 170 degrees Celsius, until they're golden brown and crispy. I made up some sugar syrup with sugar, water, honey and lemon juice. I flavoured that with some cinnamon sticks. And now the hot syrup goes onto a slightly cool cake. Be careful when you're working with syrup, it can be quite hot. And you can also flavour this with cardamom. Semolina cake tends to be quite dry, so the syrup works really well. It's enough syrup for now. I've just saved a bit for garnishing. The phyllo pastry is ready. See it's formed little ribbons and just pile it up. It's crunchy, it's crisp, it's golden brown. And then 140 grams roasted flaked almonds and pecan nuts. Sprinkle that over. A touch of syrup going over. It makes the phyllo pastry shine. I'm not really sure if it was the Greeks or the Turks that invented baklava, but this version is absolutely delicious. For the finishing touch on the pilaf, sunflower oil into a pan. And while that's heating up, use some paper towel to wipe the brindles. Just press them slightly. These go into hot oil. Squeeze one more in. It's turned golden brown. 
The brindles are ready. The pilau is steamed up. And now I've got some lemon juice and honey. The honey balances out the acidic flavour of the lemon in the lamb and also the sumac. Pine nuts. I've toasted them already in a dry pan and fresh coriander. I've procrastinated long enough about going to Turkey. I think it's time I made some travel plans. But before I dash off, I'm going to enjoy this lovely feast. Turkish leg of lamb, pilaf rice, and then a syrup-soaked baklava cake. Enjoy it.